Full-size luxury SUVs certainly have a lot of prestige with big and bold presence and having the best of what a luxury company has to offer. Mercedes-Benz has been building the GL for the last decade and has been quite a success stealing sales away from the Rover and the Escalade. For 2017, the GL is now known as the GLS to fit in with the new naming system from Mercedes and has been refreshed with more advanced safety features, technology, and luxury. So let's go ahead and check out this all new 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLS 550. Now to tell the difference between the formerly known GL and the new GLS here, you really have to start off with the headlights of the vehicle. Now it looks like they came straight off of the Mercedes S-Class, which is not necessarily a bad thing. They're pretty good looking headlights. And I really do love the appearance of the whole vehicle. It's very sporty looking and I really do love these 21 inch wheels we do get here. Now the Mercedes GLS is not a body on frame SUV like the others in the full size luxury SUV class like the Cadillac Escalade and the Lexus LX. It's a unibody SUV. Now here goes the key fob design for the vehicle. You have your remote keyless entry, your unlock, your lock, and then you have your power tailgate and your panic button. Now our GLS comes in this beautiful Designio metallic exterior color and it's a $795 option. You have smart key access on all four doors of the vehicle. And you also do have running boards. On the interior we do have a two-toned saddle brown and black leather interior. Beautiful looking color combination. And you have your power driver seat with your power recline and your power adjustable headrest. Now getting in and out of the GLS here isn't too bad thanks to the running boards we do have. And the step in height is a little high. But when you step on inside of this cabin, you're greeted with just a very beautiful cabin design. It's very lavish and pretty opulent too, I have to say. Now with this being the flagship of the Mercedes SUVs, it's basically like an S-Class in SUV form. And what you're hearing there is a 4.7 liter bi-turbo V8. Full leather wrapped steering wheel. Now we do get a new nine speed automatic transmission here. We still have the same old column mounted shifter. Basically you just go down for drive, up for reverse. When you put the vehicle into reverse, this displays your 360 degree view rear view camera. You could change the different views of the cameras. And you can also change the brightness as well, which is pretty cool. And then you also do have a front camera. So you can see a top down view. And we also do have guidance lines and trajectory, of course. And you have cameras on the side mirrors. Pretty cool. Certainly won't back up into anything or crash. <laughs> and you just go push for park. Easy as that. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights, turn on the hazards, and we're gonna go and take a look at the exterior of the vehicle. All windows are fully automatic in the GLS, of course. Let's go ahead and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators and you also do have blind spot detection. Now of course the all new GLS here comes with all of the latest safety technologies including active lane keeping assist, steering pilot and the blind spot detection. Beautiful looking SUV here. 
Coming up front, you have LED headlights for the low and high beams with LED turn signal indicators, and you also do have LED daytime running lights. Now powering the GLS here is a 4.7 liter bi-turbo V8 that produces 449 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque, with EPA estimates being 14 in the city and 18 on the highway. And our GLS is fitted with the 4MATIC all-wheel drive system. Now, if you want, you can go for a diesel engine in the GLS here, or you can go for a more powerful V8 found in the AMG models. Competitors of the GLS, you have the vehicles in the full-size luxury SUV class. This includes the likes of the Cadillac Escalade, Lexus LX570, and the Land Rover Range Rover. Now the GLS actually has one of the lowest starting base prices in the full-size luxury SUV class. However, once you add up options, it can quickly jack up the price. Now, our particular GLS costs $102,525. Like I said, EPA estimates are 14 in the city and 18 on the highway. On the top, you also do have roof rails. Now the GLS is the largest SUV that you can buy in the Mercedes-Benz family. However, it's not the most expensive. That belongs to the G-Class. You also do have LED taillights with LED turn signals. They've also been refreshed for 2017. Really love the new tail lamps here. And you also do have a rear window wiper with a rear window froster, rear parking sensors and dual exhaust tips and rear reflectors. And you have a hidden trailer tow hitch. Of course, you have all of your basic power features, power windows, power mirrors, and they also do power fold. And you have your memory seat settings for three people, and your power door locks are located right there. Now the GLS has excellent craftsmanship, I have to say. Build quality and materials are exquisite, but that's what you would expect out of a $100,000 SUV. Um, the materials on the upper door panel, mid door panel, and the armrests are all soft touch, and the dashboard is all soft touch material. And then you also do have stitching on the dashboard, which gives it a more high quality and premium feel. And it's a very rich looking interior. I really do love this saddle brown leather we do get here because it definitely gives the interior much more contrast and makes it pop a little bit more. But overall, really nice looking interior and the build quality is also excellent, which you would expect out of Mercedes Benz. Now coming to the steering wheel design, not a huge fan of this steering wheel. It's a little plain Jane looking in my opinion for a $100,000 SUV. I wish they would have a little bit more chrome or something on the steering wheel. Just a little plain looking here. Now coming over here, we have your controls for the driver information center, which I'll get to in just a minute. Over here, we also do have your steering wheel mounted audio controls and your Bluetooth phone controls, as well as your voice recognition. The steering wheel also does power tilt and telescope. I also forgot to mention that you do have manual shiftability via the paddle shifters. Coming up here is where you will find your auto dimming rear view mirror. You also do have SOS safety connect, sunglass container that's also lined with felt, and your panoramic moonroof. Gives the cabin a much more open, airy feel inside of here. And you also do have your map lights. Okay. 
The front seats are very comfortable in the GLS here. They also do have a massage function. However, I found it to be more of a gimmick. I didn't really massage my back all that well. But these seats also offer really good thigh support and these seats are great for long road trips. I would certainly take a long road trip in this vehicle. What I also really love about this interior is this anthracite poplar wood trim. It certainly gives the vehicle a much more luxurious feel inside of here. It feels rich. Now coming to the seats, the seats are pretty comfortable in the GLS. They also do have a massage function. They're great for long road trips and they offer pretty good side bolstering and pretty good thigh support too. Down here you have a little storage cubby and then you have dual cup holders that are also heated and cooled. And then this is where you'll find your main controller for the command interface, which I'll get to in just a minute. And then you have your different driver selectable modes. Then you have your center console, it's lined with felt. And you also do have this tray right here, as well as two USB charging ports. Center console storage is all right. However, if you're comparing it to the Lexus LX or the Cadillac Escalade, those vehicles offer way more center console space. You also do have the Airmatic air suspension on this GLS here, and it provides higher ground clearance if you're looking to go, maybe go off-road or anything like that. You also do have your different driver selectable modes that you could change from right here to. You have your individual mode, a sport mode, which changes the throttle response and the steering feel. Then you have your comfort mode for everyday use, your slippery mode if you're on a icy surface. Then you have your off-road mode too. There's plenty of space for the front occupants in the GLS. There's also lots of glass area on the front windows of the vehicle and seeing out of the rear of the vehicle it's pretty easy since you do have pretty square windows back there and you don't really have a sloping roof line like how you'll find in a lot of vehicles nowadays. And it really does help that you do have that 360 degree view camera. The gauges in the instrument cluster have a very traditional looking setup. We have your tachometer on the right and then your speedometer on the left. And then you have your driver information center right there. Now it's all controlled by the buttons on the steering wheel of course and it shows you various amounts of vehicle information such as your odometer, digital speedometer, then your trip information, eco display, your fuel range and your fuel consumption, all that good stuff. Then you have your Navi, which shows you your direction of travel. Up here on the upper left hand corner, you have your exterior temperature readout and then your digital clock on the upper right hand corner. Then you have your audio, you could change your audio source from here, it shows you what radio station is playing. Then you have your Bluetooth phone connectivity, you can answer telephone calls. Then you have your driver assistance, you could turn a lot of the stuff on or off, like the blind spot detection, all that good stuff. Then you have your tire pressure monitoring, shows you any warning messages, settings from the instrument cluster to the lighting, vehicle, and your convenience. These controls are for your three-stage heated seats and ventilated front seats. You also do have that for the driver and the front passenger. You have your parking sensors off button, automatic start-stop. So when the vehicle comes to a complete stop, the engine will actually shut off to save a little bit of fuel. And then you also do have your traction control off button, of course. One thing I'm not a huge fan about is where the climate controls are placed. And I really don't like the buttons. They're pretty small, in my opinion. They're really not well placed in this vehicle. But you do have dual zone automatic climate control. You have your temperatures for the dials, as you can see. Then you have your fan speeds, different zones, rear window defroster, front window defroster. And then you can also change the airflow. And you can control many of the climate settings from up here on the command interface. All right, now coming to the main head unit in the infotainment system. This is the command interface for Mercedes. It's also been upgraded for the 2017 model year. And you also do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay now. Now, let's get to the navigation system. I really do love the graphics and the rendering behind the command interface, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to. The map quality is pretty good on the navigation system. 
it's kind of like a little Google Earth and to zoom in and out you have to do it by the dial right here and everything is pretty much controlled by the dial and this touchpad on the command interface we also do have live traffic and it shows you your traffic incidents and you have a compass and it also shows you info on the navigation system too And then you can enter in your destination by manually putting in the address or from your points of interest. You could do a keyword search. And, and it also shows you your position. You can go straight to your position if you would like. If you just do where am I. And then your options, you can change the map orientation, the content, your personal points of interest, and then your route settings. Coming to radio, different media sources include Sirius Satellite Radio, and you also do have AM, FM, of course, and internet radio, and HD radio too. Now you can also, if you don't want to go straight to these menus from the dial right here, you can just go from right here on these buttons. And I really do like these buttons. However, I don't like this for the telephone. Um, this is kind of dated looking. Mercedes has been using this for quite a while now. And it's not really all that user friendly. Coming to your different media sources, you have your USB port. And then Bluetooth streaming audio. And then your CD player which I'm actually surprised they're still doing now. And then you have your SD card slot, which is your memory card. Then you also do have your telephone. You have your Mercedes-Benz mobile website, internet favorites. It also shows you your address book. You can enter in your contacts, and then you have your Apple CarPlay, Sirius Weather, phone info. You also do have your seat settings right here. There's many different ways you could change your seat if you would like, like the seat service, the backrest sides, the lumbar, and then you also do have a massage function, which I found to be kind of a gimmick. Then you have your dynamic select, shows you your vehicle data, such as what mode you're in, shows you all the information about that. Then your engine data, then you have your individual configuration as well. Then you have your 360 degree view camera that you, settings that you could change for that, of course. Fuel consumption data gives you a little bar graph. And then you have your operator's manual so you can look pretty much anything up about the vehicle. And then you have your time that you could change as well. Coming to system settings, you could change the language, display, voice control, text, reader speed, touchpad in your 360 degree camera. And then you have your Wi-Fi hotspot, and then you can activate your Bluetooth if you like. Overall, love the command interface. Like I said, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. It's not the most user-friendly infotainment system and head unit out there. Driving the GLS here, the best part about driving this vehicle is it's very relaxed and it's a very quiet highway ride. And it's whisper quiet at highway speeds, I have to say. And it provides a very comfortable and a very smooth ride with luxury car ease. And it soaks up the road bumps and smoothens out the road imperfections. The 4.7 liter bi-turbo V8 certainly provides lots of power for this vehicle. There's no need for more power, but you can go for a high performance version. And the nine speed automatic transmission is much better than what you will find and the old GL models with the seven speed automatic. It's much more responsive this time around. Overall, driving the GLS, it's quite a joy to drive. The steering and the handling is pretty good. It has that European kind of feel and it feels pretty nimble around corners.
Now, is it the sportiest SUV in the class? No, but it's certainly one of the better handling full-size SUVs. All right, and let's go ahead and shut down the GLS. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Power tailgate. It's a pretty fast moving lift gate. Now the seats back here, the third row, they do fold down just by the push of a button. Easy as that. Then you also do have your cargo cover right here and a 12 volt power outlet. Now when you fold the seats down, it does create a lot more cargo space. There's not a whole lot of cargo space when you have all the seats up, however. Build quality and materials do follow through in the rear. You also do have manual sunshades for the second row. Now sitting back here in the GLS, it certainly provides enough space for three adults. There's a decent amount of leg room and a pretty good amount of headroom. However, it certainly is, isn't the most spacious full-size luxury SUV. You do have dual map pockets back here, rear air vents, and automatic climate control, and you have heated rear seats, and then your DVD player, and you have your video jacks down there, and then you have your TV screens, Blu-ray players back here. And we also do have a manual or a rear center armrest with cup holders and rear adjustable headrests that are manual. And then you also do have second row reclining seats. All right. Now the second row seats also do fold down 60, 40 split. And to get into the third row, you actually have to pull this seat up and follow the steps given. And you can hop right into the third row. And then you also do have cup holders back here. Power passenger seat with power recline and power lumbar. Glove box compartment lined with felt. So with its updated styling, features, and powertrains, the 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLS remains a pretty solid choice for a full-size luxury SUV. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.